Um, I'd like to introduce Fajr Fradi from the National Agricultural Research Institute of Tunisia, in Tunisia. Um, her talk's going to be comparison between groundwater withdrawals for irrigation and estimated crop water requirements in the Karawan Plain. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving me uh, this uh, time to uh, speak about my work. Would you, it would be uh, about comparing between measured groundwater withdrawal for irrigation and estimated crop water consumption using remote sensing in the, the current plane. So let's just start by setting you up in the uh, general context. Uh, the current plane is an area uh, located in the semi-arid context characterized by a low rate of rainfall and uh, a really irregular, very irregular pattern of this rainfall. And, um, and uh, uh, this area ha used to be an area of flooding actually uh, because uh, of this violent and irregular pattern of rainfall until the government built a dam in the edge of this plain. So, uh, now the people are protected from uh, uh, from this uh, flooding, but we end up by an area with no surface water. So since this area is uh, an agricultural area, the pressure shifted to the groundwater, which is the main uh, source for uh, irrigation in this area. And we have two types of irrigated parameter. We have the public and the private uh, uh, irrigated parameter. So the public, the uh, government sells the water for the farmers. So we know uh, how many, uh, like how many, uh, how much the amount of irrigation in this parameter, but for the private, we don't know. So that's why we selected three farmers from uh, the private irrigated parameters to have an idea about the consumption of irrigation uh, here in these farmer, uh, farms when the farmers have a direct um, uh, access to the source. So we kind of uh, mixed uh, three types, type with uh, all tree farm, and then a field crop farm, and then a vegetable and mixed farm. For our methods, we have to compare. So um, we choose for crop water requirement, our model SAMIR, uh, which stands for satellite monitoring irrigation. And then for the groundwater withdrawal, we, uh, you, uh, we choose to uh, measure with I-button, which is a, tem a temperature logger to, uh, to measure the, uh, the temperature of the pipeline. So the Samir principle is based on the FLO dual crop uh, methods coupled with some um, remote sensing. And uh, the KCB here, the crop uh, coefficient, will be uh, driven from the NDVI. So you see the A, B, the, the coefficient A, B will be specific for each um, uh, vegetation uh, type. However, the KE, which is the uh, evaporation co coefficient, will be uh, uh, calibrated to the current plane uh, areas. So what we uh, will do in modeling with Samir, so for the, our input, we will need a crop properties, soil parameters, meteorological uh, data like rainfall, um, NDVI for sure, and then irrigation parameters, which, which are like uh, water depth, uh, frequency of, uh, of uh, irrigation. And this is depends on the irrigation methods. And now I want to, uh, to say like uh, the, uh, the trees and the, uh, the vegetables are irrigated in drip and the field crops are irrigated in uh, sprinkler. And to have a range, uh, we played with these uh, parameters to have three uh, scenarios, which are minimal, calibrated, and maximum use. For the pump uh, volume, so we, uh, what we do is like we have this temperature log, so we end up with uh, temperature uh, measurement all over the day, and then we specify the duration of pumping, which will be a, an instant drop in temperature. And then we multiply with the flow rate to have the pumped volume. I want to see, you see the charts here where the pumping, like the temperature will be like the groundwater temp uh, temperature. So let's see the, our results here. For the tree, uh, for the tree uh, farm, actually, we see some over irrigation. I want to say like the, the, the yellow stand for the, uh, the farmers and 
the three scenarios are in blue, uh, uh, green, and uh, and uh, red. So we see like um, some over irrigation here in spring, and you see like the perception of farmer for the rainfall that uh, which was well, the rainfall which was like uh, before uh, the irrigation. So like the farmer doesn't seem to be convinced about the rainfall effect on the soil moisture. For the field crops here, we see like there is an, the, the observed consumption uh, is usually higher than the maximum uh, use scenario. And we, we can say here like some, there is some possible over irrigation, but we need uh, really to more investigation on this one. You see it, and there, there is like here in the in the summer, because of the planting of the chili. So you see the the rising with the plant uh, the plantation of the of the vegetables. And here for the mixed form, uh, really the things go wider because we have the observed uh, consumption is usually higher than the maximum use. So and this is like due to the plantation every time of the veg uh, vegetables, which are irrigated by in drip. So our conclusion would be about this, um, the potential of remote sensing actually models in um, giving uh, irrigation amount specific to the farm condition and a daily basis. And uh, we saw a promising result for tree cro uh, crops and uh, maybe an evidence of possible water efficiency improvement for vegetables and cereal. So we can uh, maybe do uh, analysis for for uh, uh, water productivity for to, uh, for these uh, types of crops, and for the farmers' irrigation management, I think we we need investigation to uh, to really understand more the farmers' irrigation logics, and you can see the rainfall effect, which like differ from the uh, models and the farmer decision. And this is uh, the most, I think, uh, important thing is like drip irrigation really doesn't mean water saving, actually. It's all about practice. And then the take home message, I would say like crop water requirement is one thing and uh, farmers irrigation logic and constraint is another. And we have to sit, to sit the best compromise between these two things to have a better water uh, management. So my acknowledgement here goes to all these people involved in uh, this work. For more information about Samir, please contact uh, Vincent Simonou. And uh, for more information about I-button measurement, uh, please contact Sylvain Messuel. And thank you.